Good morning and welcome to part two of cheese making. If you want to see part one where we took the milk and turned it into the curd and then pressed the curd, head over to my friend David the Goods channel. You'll see all about that side. Today, we're going to be taking the curd, we're going to be wrapping it and putting it in the cheese cave. Let's go. Okay, so what exactly are we going to be doing today? So today, the cheese has been pressed. Now what we need to do with that cheese is we have to protect the inside of the cheese to limit the moisture exchange from the environment and the actual cheese itself. So there are three main ways in which we can do this. One, we can just put a coat of wax on it. You dip it in, the, you dry the cheese, you dip it in the wax. Then you put the whole block into the cheese cave and that wax will limit the moisture exchange and protect the cheese from getting too dried out, cracked, and just bad things from happening to it. The other way you can do it is you can let that cheese form a natural rind where you let the cheese sit out, you put salt on the outside of it. That salt is going to quickly dry and cure the outside of the cheese to create a natural barrier from the environment and the cheese and help to limit that exchange. These are the cheeses that have a really hard, thick, natural rind. Or the third way, which we're going to do today, is we're going to bandage the cheese. So what does that involve? Bandaging the cheeses, we're going to coat it in some type of fat. We're going to use pig lard today. You can also use vegetable shorting. And then we're going to put cheesecloth over that pig fat. So first things first, we're going to take the cheese out of the mold. Okay, so this cheese has been in the press at 50 pounds for 12 hours. And here is the block of our freshly pressed cheese. So we're going to gently take the cheesecloth off. Beautiful. It's still moist. If you wanted to wax it or do the rind cure, you'd let this cheese dry at room temperature for a couple days. Since we're going to be doing the bandaging, I'm going to take the same. I'm going to take a cheesecloth, and we're just going to cut four caps for a top, two on the top, two on the bottom. Out of our cheesecloth. On my American champagne Beer ain't got nothing on you You make my heart bound When you're walking One. You give me goosebumps With your sweet talking okay. So now that we have four tops and four bottoms Sorry, two tops, two bottoms We can cut a strip To go around the circumference of the wheel Like to sip a little whiskey on Friday mm. To celebrate when the week is done And I like to shoot Ooh, a little whiskey on Saturday night But only if everybody is having fun Okay, so now we have our top and our bottom cheesecloths. We're going to get some lard. Nice, delicious pig fat. Can't beat it. Goes great with eggs cheese and a whole bunch of other stuff and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coating cheese with the lard and the lard is going to one help to make the cheesecloth stick and it's going to provide a little bit of a moisture barrier barrier and then it's going to allow mold to grow on the outside of that and why we're doing this is that's still going to allow the cheese to breathe and have some moisture exchange it's going to limit that moisture exchange just like a layer of wax or a natural rind would do but the mold is going to impart flavors into that cheese which are going to give it a much more strong pungent flavor and it's also going to change the texture of the cheese from a nice creamy cheese to more of a flakiest cheese okay so we have our lard coating on the top We're going to push the cheesecloth into the lard so it sticks. All right, now we're putting our second one on. Okay, 
All right, now we're gonna flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. get last bandage on there got a little bit this children is why it's important to pay attention in arts and crafts so when you need to cut a rectangle you can actually cut a rectangle all right now let's go put it in the cave And if you want to learn more about how I built this cheese cave and what exactly it is and how it operates, make sure you click the video either up in the top or the left or somewhere in the description. And what we're going to do is we're just going to let this cheese sit. We're going to age. I'm going to come. I'm going to flip it every day. So we get even moisture exchange throughout the entirety of the cheese. And then after 60 days, we'll eat it. All right. Thank you for watching. Hope you like, subscribe for more content.